built the same way. Man, the struggle is a workout. It ain't easy lifting weights. You gotta curl through your family, curl through your friends. Keep your head above water. Let me teach you how to swim. Hey, 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 hey. What's up, everybody? What's up? Appreciate y'all tuning in. <clears throat> THK Podcast. It's take three right here. I appreciate all the reactions I've been getting. I appreciate the comments, the messages. You know, I appreciate y'all. I would say this is something I like to talk about, so I definitely would be on here talking. Regardless, just as y'all gonna love these dogs regardless. But it does make it that much easier. That much more enjoyable to know that, you know, even if it's just one person is out there, you know, appreciate appreciating the same thing I am or we are, you know. When you walking your dog down the street and you see that person uh <clears throat> walk uh, across the street to walk on the other side, just because you and your bulldog walking down the street, you know, it's kind of like, dang. You know, it ain't even like that. But then when you see one, uh, you know, not afraid to walk past you, you know, with, with, you know, respect, respecting your space and vice versa. I mean, they don't even try to touch the dog. They just say, that's a good looking dog, sir, ma'am. And then keep walking. And make you feel good. Make you walk out with your chest out and wanna walk a little bit longer. <laughs> so it's the same thing. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yeah, so uh, going into dog walking, you know, actually talking about that. So I wanted to touch a little bit on that, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, I consider a dog walk a workout, period. You know, it doesn't mean it's an intense workout. It doesn't mean uh, there's no fun behind it, behind it or enjoy enjoyment. It doesn't mean none of that because, let's be honest, how many of us get out and just go for a walk around the block? It's probably too hot or too cold or you work too long or you work too hard or you've been on your feet all day at work. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why I say that. That's why I say that cause at the end of the day, none of us, a lot of us aren't getting out and just doing that on a normal basis regardless outside of a work routine. You know, none of us are just going for a walk. So, uh, for the one, so when you get out and start doing that, you know, just to get it done, it becomes a workout until you get in that uh, routine. So it's the same thing with the dogs. Same thing with the dogs. And, uh, of course, there's uh, uh, plenty of ways to work your dog. And this isn't just the the bulldog world or whatever. It's just your working dogs in general. There's, I mean, I haven't seen a lot of dogs, <laughs> you know, for example, on the treadmill. Treadmill, I haven't seen all different types of breeds on the treadmills, and that's great. That's great. Uh, for example, we can start there with a treadmill. Treadmill work. So, from the ones who, from the outside looking in, who have no idea about a treadmill, you know, never seen one in person or anything like that. They may just see a video. The video may be 15 seconds long, maybe 30 seconds long, maybe a minute, I don't know. And uh, all they're seeing is this dog just running hard, hard, running hard as hell the whole time without stopping. Probably, you know, slobber foaming at the mouth, you know, getting the workout in. But from the outside looking in, for example, if the video started with that dog on the treadmill running like that and then ended with the dog on the treadmill running like that, a lot of people are assuming that, oh, you know, they're just kind of throwing the dog on there and they're just kind of literally running the hell out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's no structure to it. Okay. And. By all means, that's completely wrong. Completely wrong. There's structure. There is structure. Now, I'm not going to speak 
for every single person on the good or bad side. I can't do that. I wish I could, but I can't. I, you know what I mean? I have no idea what they're doing. Uh, I don't know. In North, uh, uh, North Carolina or whatever. I'm not in North Carolina. You know, or, you know, overseas, whatever. So, but what I'm saying is I can't question the fact, or, you know, I can't say with confidence that there's not somebody out there who has a treadmill and a working dog who knows exactly what they're doing. That's not the case. Because, unfortunately, a lot of us don't like going back to the history, to the history books, you know, especially if it's not on YouTube. A lot of us don't like to pick up the book and figure out how it's really done. We just like to get the tools and go to work. So, what I'm getting at, so, for example, the treadmill. <clears throat> It'll be broke down. It's not a straight, you know, dog just running so he can't run no more. Of course, you know, it all depends on the workout and how you're working your dog and what you're working your dog for type thing. But... Sometimes it will be something like a 30 second run or a 30 second run and then a, a 15 second break or a minute run, a 30 second break. Or, you know, what I mean, it's it's broken down just how, a, a, let's just say, how a human will work out. Same thing, how you do your reps, your sets, or if you're doing sprints, <clears throat> you know, you got this many suicides. It's broken up the same way. Okay. And again, I'm not saying this to, you know, just, you know, tell, any, tell anybody they can just go grab their dog and go throw them on a the treadmill. I'm not saying that at all because there's a lot more to it. For example, you have to you have to know when your dog's getting tired. Sometimes a working dog in general, you know, they want to work, so they won't, you know, they won't stop even if they're tired. They won't stop until they can't go no more. That's when they're going to stop. So you have to know. From the from the eyes, from the tongue, from from the foam around the mouth. So that uh, you have to do your do your homework. You have to do your homework. So the treadmill work will be broken down. So don't for the ones you know. Again, I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, hearing this that uh, may or may not own these dogs that have or have not done this treadmill work, but this information is out there and it's already in the public and it's for everybody. So now I'm at the point like, okay, let's just go ahead and start trying to educate. All right. Instead of arguing with people, with these people and stuff online and everything, well, I get it. I get how it looks from the outside looking in. I get you didn't, you wouldn't care to go read one of these dog books or, you know, watch one of these old dog man talk and stuff. I get that. I get that. So, but some of us did, so you have to trust. So this is kind of what I'm doing. This is kind of what I'm doing. Again, this is the THK podcast number three, take three. And we're talking to uh, dog work. So, all right, so there's the treadmill. So again, we're just going to kind of run through this. So the treadmill, just get that myth out there that people are just throwing dogs in the treadmill and running the hell out of them. And I mean, there's it's not happening. And no one, you can't force a dog to do it either. I don't care what, how you set up your treadmill. You're not going to force a dog to run the treadmill. So that's another thing. So no, you know what I mean. So to understand that a lot of these dogs enjoy it. They love it. They want to do it. I mean, it's even better when you got the ones that that are, you know, comfortable enough with. As soon as they see a treadmill, they run and jump up there, you know, and want to start going. Some of them, you got to, you know, they'll run up to it or whatever, and they'll be, you know, all around it. As soon as you pick them up and put them on it, they're going. You know, so you have to understand that. But that's not to be misunderstood with to be that that treadmill could be replaced with a dog walk. That is 100% not true. Okay, now again, I know a lot of you out there may know this, but some don't. The ones who uh, don't own these dogs, these working dogs, the ones who never been around them before, they just kind of see clips here and there online on social media. All right, so 
that it's like you don't just say okay I'm gonna let my dog use the bathroom and throw him on the treadmill for that that's not that's not how it works okay so that, that that's a myth so you go ahead and boom that's gone all right dog dog walking is probably arguably for me I'm gonna say it is the best and number one thing you can do now of course there's your uh, tricks to it for example Walking a dog on the concrete versus walking a dog on the grass. Okay? You want to get your dog on the grass. Now, I get it. The dog's going to go on the concrete sometimes. I get it. I get it. But still, for me, for example, if I'm in an area where it's concrete grass and I'm kind of working what I got, I'm staying as close as possible to the grass, if not in the grass, so that way if my dog does get on the concrete, he or she will naturally, I mean, they're gonna know when it's time to get right back in that grass. You see what I'm saying? And if I, I'm in a spot where we can do all grass, even better, but I get it. Some people may live in the city. They may, I get that, I get that, all right? Just kind of work with what you got, but you want to be with some grass. And there's things you can do. There's things you can do uh, to, you know, for the pads, you know, you just want to put stuff on the pads of their feet and, you know, rather it be a little uh, ointment or, you know, they have the little paddings and stuff. But, you know, me personally, I just try to avoid that as much as possible. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I do this and I do that because I don't have to because I try to avoid keeping my dogs on concrete. So, um, so yeah, so... So if you can keep your dog in the grass, you're going to get a much better walk on your dog, all right? Much better walk. Of course, there's the saying, oh, walking on the concrete is going to, you know, shave the nails down. Okay, yeah, sure, I guess. But by the time it actually gets the nails shaved down, the, uh, so is their pads. So I don't know how much, how worth it it is, all right? Because the pad, the pad injury sucks. All right, I have had to deal with one before. And uh, it's not even a, one of those, like, it's a bad, like, big, uh, bloody thing. It's not nothing like that. The problem is the dog is always going to be on his pad or licking or something like that. There's always something that's going to uh, irritate that. So it takes a while. So I just avoid it. Um, but, yeah, so definitely dog walking is for sure number one. Sure number one. If, if I had to, if somebody told me, they can set me up a spot where I don't know where I could walk some hills and everything every day, you know, versus doing all the other workouts and stuff. Um, I'll probably catch myself up the hills a lot. I'll probably catch myself. You know, I, some people may live in that type of area, but I'll definitely be walking that. I'll be walking that nature trail and stuff for sure. For sure. That's where you're going to get a lot of good, positive results, natural results. So next, let's get into to the group to the grimy, the bite work, the mouth work. I know some people are like, "Why? Why do you do that?" Okay. My my answer is they're dogs. So a dog, for example, when you're working out, when you go to the gym. And it's, uh, if you're doing it how you're supposed to do it, I guess, and let's just say it's upper body day. Let's just use that for example. You're not just going to do a whole bunch of bench press and then leave. You see what I mean? You're going to do some biceps too. Why would you do biceps? Well, isn't that part, you know, that's a muscle that needs to be worked, correct? Well, why do we work out? Because it keeps us fit and healthy. And the goal is longevity, right? Okay, so same thing with these dogs. They're, and that's the working breed in general. They have these muscles. They're built, you know, we want longevity. They're, uh, you have to work them out. You know, it's just period. Any dog, it stands out more with the working dog because how they work. But there's not, I don't know a person yet 
who hasn't went to the store and bought their dog a little squeaky ball or something like that and the dog or a rope and the dog. It's the same thing with these dogs, but you can't buy a working dog a, a little squeaky ball and stuff and think it's going to last. I mean, you're, you're lucky if they just, if, if it's not gone instantly. I know mine, if I try to buy anything from Walmart, like a dollar store or anything, it's going to be gone in seconds, if not literally eight. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, of course, that means we we are forced to kind of take the, the products to the next level or the way of working, letting them work that to the next level. So, uh, with that said, I mean, I, I, at the same time, I can say, as long as I've been around these dogs, I've never been bit by one of my dogs ever, period. Even as a child with my dad, I've never been bit by, by one of my dogs. So, uh, at the same time, I guess it's arguably a good a good outlet for them, maybe. Arguably, that's no science to that. That's, no, that's just me, just, you know, that thought just came to my mind, you know, arguably. A good outlet, because like I said, I've never had that problem. So, um, yeah. So, of course, yeah, you, okay, so you got your treadmill, and you got your dog walks, and you got your mouth work. Now, your mouth work could be some people will do the, you know, the sleeve stuff for, you know, your uh, watch dogs and stuff like that. But me personally, I try my best to avoid teaching my dog to bite a person, period. And it actually doesn't, you know, the breed is irrelevant. That's just something I don't want to teach my dogs. So, uh, not saying there's nothing against it. It's just not something I can speak much on because I don't do it. I don't do it. What I do is uh, I'll use the cowhide, or maybe if I can't find a, a a real thick rope or something like that. Sometimes even tires, things like that. And I don't mean you know letting them hang and stuff in the tires either. I just you know just I've seen things like that. You know, I think about it. Your dog is most likely puncturing a hole in his tire or whatever. So they're not just hanging by their mouth or by the by the muscles of their mouth anymore. They're hanging, they're literally hanging by the teeth. <laughs> so you're thinking, oh, you know, they're you know, they're getting a workout, but literally they're almost stuck up there, but they're fine with being stuck up there until that tooth, you know, because they want to be there anyway. So they're like, well, that's what I want to do anyways and until that tooth falls out. <laughs> so yeah, so that's uh, you definitely have to be careful with that. So it's you know you can't just go throwing anything out there. <clears throat> but with that said, yeah, I do things like that uh, for many reasons. You you know, obviously we're doing the confirmation shows and stuff as well. So I like them to look good, and when you're doing things like that, it's almost like you doing uh doing rope work. The same thing. You doing uh, if you go to the gym doing some rope 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 work, or you're tying a uh, rope around the tire or some weights, and you're staying standing there in a squatted position, and you're pulling it to you. You know what I mean? If you know a lot of you may know what I'm talking about. You see, it's the same thing when I get to grab the cowhide, and my dog can actually hold on to it versus just you know tearing it up in one bite. You know, then I can you know move it around. It's the same thing. Say, or I could do just that. I could put a weight or something, no, you know, not say, or a tire on the end, and then let my dog just kind of shake it around and keep pulling it. And say, it's the same thing. They're working now that it's really working them back muscles too, his leg muscles. So, uh, a tired dog is a happy dog. <laughs> as simple as put a tired dog is a happy dog. Okay. So, that's always the goal. I want my dog to look good. I want my dog to feel good. And at the end of the day, I know I have a working breed, so my dog's going to have some energy. I need my dog to burn the energy. It's just period. And sometimes just to walk isn't going to do it. We can walk, and then we get here, and they're going to drink some water, and then start huffing a little bit. And next thing you know, if they you know, even see a ball or something, they're running to it to grab it. Like, All right, come on, come on, let's play a little fetch now. Or just, you know, come on, grab the rope, grab the rope. You see what I mean? So it's just like you. You go to the gym and you get your mile in before your workout. Shoot, you want to lift a little weights or vice versa, however you do it. You see what I mean? So 
Don't be so rough on for the ones that still, you know, learning or just curious about the working dogs and stuff. Don't be so rough on the, the owners. And when you're looking from the outside in, understand you're looking from the outside in. All right. There's a there's a lot to to these working dogs, and I can tell you, the ones that y'all are not y'all, but a lot of people are looking to attack, as far as you know, they're bad dogs or bad owners and stuff. It's usually not the ones are in this, you know, the the actual working dog breed. It's usually not. I know that's very hard to believe. I understand that, but I mean. <laughs> the proof is all there. If you look at, uh, you know, for example, dog attacks or, you know, all those type things, you know, most of them, you know, they weren't your German Shepherds or your uh, your American Pit Bull Terriers or your, you know, your, your Rock Rollers. It's the actual working dogs, the purebred working dogs, you know, not the ones that, you know, people are just out there breeding and telling you they're pit bulls or telling you they're pure bear rock rollers. That's where it gets tricky. That's where it gets messy. And that's, again, from the outside looking in. Because I promise you, at least as far as the American Pit Bull Terrier community, if somebody's doing wrong, if somebody's raising their dogs in bad conditions, if somebody's uh, uh, raising people biters, I promise you, the American pit bull terrier community is going to handle it within themselves. Not having it, I'm telling you, not having it. So then it's the ones that's outside. You see what I'm saying? It's the ones that's trying to that's that's lying to you. Put it like that. So it just is what it is. What it is, and that's something uh, everybody has to take in consideration. And the ones who don't own these breeds. You're looking from the outside. And that's kind of what this podcast is for. I'm trying to fill the fill the gaps. Alright. That's my goal. Fill the gaps. So we talked mill work, dog walk, mouth work, which is, you know, all your everything. From the uh, tug of war type to the flirt, you know, flirt pole, all that, all that stuff. You know, this is all stuff for all working dogs. Because even if you're training your dog to chase some rats, you know, to, for barn hunting, a flirt pole is perfect. Because the whole point is for your dog not to touch it and keep moving as fast as around as you can. Good. Keep moving the stick, keep moving the stick. And your dogs, you know, jumping at it trying to chase it and stuff so just like it would do a rat if a rat is running back and forth trying to avoid the dog or whatever the whatever it is you may do the uh uh lure racing you know all that stuff so yeah just understand people that there's there's more to it there's more i think about it like this say if you're like oh no why would they kill rats why would they do barn hunting okay cool so what if you own one of these dogs, but you don't want to do barn hunting? You don't want your dog to kill rats, but you want, but you love the breed. You love a working dog. So, what you would do was would get the flirt pole, because now you get to feel that itch for that dog. Your dog still gets to go in them almost as you would say, I guess, a cat mode chasing a laser. Your dog still gets to do that, but they, you know, still think it's about to grab something. And, you know, it gets the actual feel. So, yeah, just keep that in consideration. Keep that in consideration. All right, y'all. So, I'm working on, like, making these so long, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. If you would like uh, to hear a little more out of one podcast, go ahead and uh, comment and let me know. Let me know. We can keep it going. <laughs> we can keep it going. But, uh, yeah, just again, from the outside looking in, just taking consideration you're looking in from the outside. All right? And then for the ones, you know, we're in here doing what we do and then getting, getting judged without even asked a question or whatever. 
I get it. It's frustrating. Right. But these people don't know. So before it gets to a ridiculous point, I think it's time to educate. Let's do a little educate, all right? So, once again, I appreciate y'all. This is the THK Podcast, take three. I'm enjoying doing this. I hope you are enjoying listening. Don't hesitate to comment, message, something you would like to hear about, topic, or even uh, something you went through or going through. I'm, uh, I'm curious. I'm curious. Let's see what we can get going. So, again, I appreciate everybody for listening. Shout out to Tips of Tip Top Shake. Of course, THK. Legendary Music. Try Hard Champion Clothing. Appreciate it. All the support. I appreciate that. I want to give a shout out to Tyrone Barnes, Green River Kennels, Chad McClain, Johnny Five, and Crunch Time Kennels. I do appreciate y'all. I do appreciate y'all. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the love from all the new subscribers. All right. A lot of things going to be going on. A lot of things going to be going on. All right. So... I'll holla at y'all next time. And uh, keep doing you, man. Everybody keep doing you. Stay positive in this crazy world. All right? Stay positive, y'all. That's all you can do. All right?